And as she's about to offer you a pint, she trips, she falls, and spills beer on the both of you. At least on your shoes and at least on your trousers. It falls to the floor. But you would expect someone that falls trips to make some sort of sound or something. Just react. But it's like she falls and she just gets up as if it was normal or nothing. There's something so odd about her behavior. You can't really put your finger on it. If there is a strangeness to it, I probably quickly ignore it in my mind as I go to put my beer down and help her up. Oh, dear, you've had a fall. Uh, Let me help. Let me help. Don't worry. It's not a problem. Is it? Is it, Karen? It's not a problem. Uh, uh, no. God, uh, and he's looking down at his pants because, of course, he got the worst of it. You're right, miss. And he kind of like, like a half squat. Obviously, Richard doesn't need his help, but he's making a show of it. She looks at you, the both of you, kind of as if you want to hurt her, almost. She pulls her arms back to herself, the one that you helped her get off with, and looks down at the mess she made on the floor, looks back at you. It looks like she's trying to say something, but nothing leaves her lips. It's very odd. You both know Anna, and you both know her to be just a normal girl. She's not normal tonight, that's for sure. She takes a deep breath, and if none of you are stopping her, she's gonna try to leave as quickly as she can. I don't see why I would stop her. I feel a little concerned, but if anything, for a moment, I even find myself thinking, did she hurt herself? Did she hit her head? Maybe. I didn't see it, but could she have concussion? Uh, nonsense, of course not. And yes, as she goes, I just look a little awkward at Karen and say, Huh. She just doesn't seem herself. Or maybe she is herself. It's, it's been so long. No. Owen, you are looking for Esther. That's right. I don't know where she's gone off to. And you find her. She uh, hasn't found a table. She is actually standing near one of the windows that is facing a woodland area, pretty nearby to the Britannica Inn. Esther, I thought I'd lost you for a second there. I couldn't see you. I thought you were going to find a table. What are you doing all the way over here? She isn't saying anything. She has that same expression she had on her face when you first entered your house. She turns around with a furrowed brow, and says, There's rats, Owen. Look outside, there's rats. I look out through the window. What are you talking about, Esther? It's getting quite dark now. It's actually almost completely dark outside. Time seems to have passed incredibly quickly. You can't see anything right off the bat. But Esther insists... Owen, the rats, they look different. They look... She pauses, looks down at her hands. Owen, I... They look like they have human faces. Esther, I I said it was a bad idea for us to come out tonight. You've obviously taken a turn. No, Owen, it's true. Please, please believe me. And she points outside again. Can I roll spot hidden? You definitely can. That's what I shall do. I succeed. Very good. Alright. This time you actually do see something. And you almost can't believe your eyes. Across the courtyard, outside of Botanica Inn, there is a creature sitting in the middle of it all few beams from the moon is kind of illuminating its glistening fur. It's large. It's larger than a normal rat. It's sitting down in almost a human kind of way. 
Its limbs are longer than that of a rat's, but it does have the tail, it has the fur. As you're looking at it, it's grooming itself. It has its back turned to you, but just a moment after, it turns around to look at you. And what is staring you right in the eyes is not the face of a rat, it's the face of a man. I would like to do you to do a sanity roll here. This is a very odd situation for Oven. He's seen a lot of weird things, but this is this is beyond normal. So I roll a forty-three against my sanity of seventy, so I do succeed. Although it's startling to Oven, it's not worse than a lot of other things he's seen. I'll still shout out. What what the bloody hell is that? Esther, stay in here. Stay stay right here, okay? Don't don't move. And I'm going to head to the pub door, pick up one of the walking sticks that's probably been deposited in a blown shell case, as is often the trend for umbrellas and walking sticks in a pub like this. Uh, I'm going to pick one up and stride towards the thing. All right, so all of you other three, Richard and Cowan and Byrne, you see this. You see Owen shout something. And not in, in a laughing or joking kind of way. This is quite serious. And you see him walk towards the door and grab uh, something and leaving. Seeing this, I stop my vain attempts at getting something to eat and my glaring at Karin. And I pull myself up, try to look official, there's, there's something going on, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to help, I'm starting to make my way over there to see what it is. Are you going to follow Owen? Yes. As best I can. I'm also inclined. I'll give Richard a tap on the side of the arm, cock my head toward Owen. Owen's the only one in the town who I really know well enough to understand his behavior, and that seems atypical. And if there's trouble in town, and I'm not responsible for it, I definitely want to know what it is. I give Karen a little bit of a confused look. After all, I don't really understand why would Father Owen suddenly want to go outside? Something's going on. But I guess I kind of will walk with Karen, at least to see... Although, again, I'm a little distracted. The conversation was starting to trail off after all. I know Karen, but I didn't ever really know him that well. Uh, again, he was a boy, literally, when I was friends with his brother. But I do follow, although just as I'm going, I do cast one more gaze over the whole crowd. Because I really would like if, to see Rebecca. If she actually is here. She must be here. Are you going to do uh, a spot hidden? Yes. Let's try that. 35 under 70. Alright, well, you, uh, despite what's going on right now, what's on your mind is Rebecca. And you actually do see Rebecca. She's standing in the corner near the band. She's talking with some girlfriends. She hasn't seen you, it seems like. I kind of frown a little to myself and I take notice of that. But for the moment, I will at least follow Karen to... Maybe the windows of the pub or wherever he's going. Just for a moment more. Alright, so are you all going outside? I don't know that outside is as far as I need to go. I'd like to at least be able to see what Owen's getting up to. So maybe up to the window, peering through? Yes, I'm the same. Just going to look out the window just to see what's going on. And when I realize nothing's going on, I'm going to, I'm going to go and speak to Rebecca. I'm going to stride to action. I follow Owen outside. Why don't you make a dexterity roll to see if you can actually catch up to uh, Owen when you are drunk? I roll a 94 over 35. You try your hardest to catch up. You really want to see what Owen is up to. It seems pretty serious, but you can't help but stumble and bump into walls and bump into tables and dancing people they're all in the way why are they all in the way 
Owen, you get outside. And the rat thing, whatever it is, is still sitting there. But as soon as you come, it turns its head around to look at you. Do I recognize the face? No, you don't. I will raise the stick above my head and I will shout, Clear off, you, you bloody pest! Clear off! As you're standing there trying to get the creature to run away, Burn, you do catch up to Owen and you see him talking to something. You can't really seem to make out what it is. Your vision is kind of blurry. Mm. Someone chops into you, Owen. But, Burn, but look at this. Look at this thing. I come over. I actually take a step to the side to ensure that, well, I don't know how drunk he is, but to ensure that his vision isn't impeded. Uh, you walk over, see what it is. Burn, you, your body movements are quite all over the place, and despite this creature being brave enough to just sit there while someone is threatening it, this is enough to make it run very fastly away over uh, and towards the forest and towards the mountains. Is that a rat? It's a bloody big rat. I've not seen rats that size since, well, since our war. And the strange thing about it was its f face. Never seen anything quite like it. Opportunists, they are coming out now that there's not been proper people in town. Do you remember? Do you remember when uh, we were in the trenches? You know, and well, obvious, obviously, you remember that. But do you remember sometimes when you'd find rats the size of dogs? And yeah, it was like one of them. It was a rat the size of a dog. And I mean, maybe it's just the light out here, but it didn't look like it had a rat's face. It looked like it had a. I've well, not even had a drink yet, and it. It looked like this man. Look, look, it looked like it had a man's face. Burn. It was bizarre. I stand there and I look at you. You're a man whose word I take very seriously. So even despite my stupor, I look at you and you. You're serious, aren't you? Of course, I. Yeah, of course, I'm bloody serious. A man's face, you say. I didn't I squint after it in the darkness. I didn't see that. Well, I, I didn't, uh... I didn't recognize the face, I, but it was definitely wasn't a rat's face. It had, you know, a... A man's face! I don't know how else to, to ex describe it! That's what it was! I scratch my neck and I say, It's a foul omen. It's, it's a devil's omen, if that's what you saw. Oh, None of that. It's not a devil's omen. It's must be some weird hybrid that's come out of the woods. Who knows? Um, well, there's no such thing as a hybrid man rat. Oh, I'm not saying that a man rats burn. I'm saying maybe I don't know. Me I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. It's not a night for this. I look over and I see the youngsters' faces in the window. I just wave at them as Corin and Richard. Yes, from our point of view, what did we end up even seeing? Well, you saw the back of a very, very big rat. The biggest rat you've ever seen, but you didn't see anything, any faces or anything like that. Well, it's certainly peculiar, but I, I think I'll just turn to Karen and say, that was like a do dog or something. I, uh, it's a bit strange. I don't know what's gotten into Owen. Huh. Well, it all seems like it's all fine, so with that I'll kind of just awkwardly nod to Karen and... Realising that there is no danger and Owen's fine, I will begin making my way through the crowd towards Rebecca. As Richard departs, I will raise the glass just enough to cheers. A silent thank you for the drink. I give a firm, friendly nod back. Rebecca, at least Richard, looks just as lovely as the day he left. Actually, she looks even 
better now. She is wearing a incredibly beautiful floral evening gown as she's swirling a glass of something. He's not sure what it is. There is a shadow of sadness that is covering her otherwise beautiful and bright smile and those sparkling eyes. She's talking to two of her girlfriends as Richard walks over. Feel a moment of nervousness again because, yes, I'm taken aback. Like, obviously, she was beautiful before, but she's grown. She's, as have I. She is an adult now, truly. And she looks wonderful, but and I'm filled with a little lack of confidence. But I, I, I take a full swig of the remainder of my drink. I put it down on a side table and I walk over. Excuse me, ladies. Uh, sorry to interrupt. As you approach, you can hear her girlfriend saying, Oh, it's Richard. It's Richard. And Rebecca turns around. Oh, hi, Richard. Um, nice to see you back from the war. I'm glad you came back in one piece. Yes, I... Yes, mostly. I, You know, not, nothing too serious. Uh, Rebecca, it's so good to see you again. Likewise, Richard. Nice to see you back. Have you been keeping well? Uh, well what's been occurring? Uh, I, I want to know everything. <laughs> Do you, Richard? I thought you... I thought you'd find the love of your life, as your father described it. No. I say it almost a bit too abruptly, and then I kind of clear my throat. No. No, Pa... He, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about sometimes. You know how he is. No, he... I think he may have told you a few things that weren't true. Uh, in fact, most things. I don't actually know what he's told you, but it... No. No. No, I haven't. One of her girlfriends steps in front of her. Oh, that's what all men say. Now you're just pulling back because she doesn't want you back. Well, with all due respect, that's for her to say. And again, no, it's not what, what I actually... I'm sure some men say it, but no, I, I... Do you know how sad she's been? She's been crying for weeks now. And that's because of you. You men are all the same, she says and huffs. I kind of feel a little taken aback. After all, I tend to be quite polite to everyone I meet, so I don't want to say anything unpleasant. Instead, I just look at Rebecca and I just reach into my front pocket. Not the back pocket, no, this is not the time for that. But the front pocket. And I just take out the locket. And I say, Rebecca, look, I... No, I... I've had this the entire time. Look, you gave it to me, remember? I, I, I've kept it with me every single day. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> Honest. But... But I thought... I thought you found a French model. French model? I, I don't even know where that would have happened. I've been in... I, I've not been anywhere you would meet a French model, Rebecca. I, I've been in mud and filth and, and covered in blood and... Sorry, I... No, no, I, I, I start sounding a little desperate as I step towards... Uh, closer. I, I don't know what Paz said. I, I think he, he has silly ideas, but he's wrong. And he's been lying to you, whatever he said. He, I, I, I've been thinking of you every single every single day, Rebecca. I, I promise you. I, I promise. Rebecca's hard demeanor crumples a little bit when she sees how desperate Richard is. She smiles just a little bit. You can see that you're breaking through to her. Well... Well, I guess you wouldn't have kept the locket if it, if it was actually true, what your father said, but, but why, why would he lie? He's got silly ideas about my future and all that. He, he thinks I still want to go to London. I tell you what, you know what, I, I don't, not really. No, uh, well, maybe. I don't know. I, 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 I'm really glad to see you again, Rebecca. I, I'm really glad to see you. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you get upset. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's why... The last two letters, I, I I missed them. Well, after your father gave me the news about your French girl, I didn't reply. But if it's actually true that it's, it's just a lie, then I guess all of these tears have been for nothing. Oh, Richard. She jumps into your arms and hugs you very tightly and... This is just an overwhelming feeling for Richard, his pure happiness. 
Yes, it is. I, I... <laughs> thoughts go to other places and I must put those down because we're in the middle of a dance hall and that is not proper behaviour, but I really wish I could just hold her really tightly back. I settle for a polite embrace, but it, it's hard not to lean in and she smells so good, her hair. And good. She understood. She understood. I knew she would. I knew she would. I know Dad meant well. I know Dad meant well, but no. No, he was wrong. He's wrong. Owen and Burn, you return inside. And oh, when you see that Esther has finally settled down, she's talking to some of the villagers having a pint. Uh, she seems to be more at ease now. And you see that uh, that Karen is still standing at the window, but seems a bit concerned about what just happened outside. I'll go so far as to say that as they both walk in, I'll take a few tentative steps towards the door, uh, closing that distance, and then just uh, extend a hand and get the father's attention. Oh, uh, Karen, uh, I didn't... Uh... How are you? Uh, how are you doing, uh, my boy? Uh, it's uh, oh, mm, been been a while, hasn't it? Oh, you know, we've all been busy these uh, last few years. So uh, everything. I und- I've already heard you were um, heroically slaving away down in the mines. That's uh, bloody good work. Bloody good work. We wouldn't have been able to. Um, well, there were people mechanized, you know, all of that. They were always saying, if it wasn't for the boys back home, getting the coal out of the ground and getting the oil to the front, well, we wouldn't have done nearly as well as we did. So um, my hat goes off to you, young man. Not an easy job. I appreciate it, Reverend. And that might be the first time he sounded genuine when he says that since arriving back home. Well, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I suppose I am still reverend, but not of fear. Mark's been, uh, filling in for me. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be, uh, taking the church back on. I suppose that's, uh, well, that's down to the church. <laughs> uh, not down to me. Uh, but, well, as I say, it's, it's good to see you again. Uh, I, sh- I should really, I should really, uh, check on my wife. Before you do that... John Clark walks up to Burn and the rest of you. He greets all of you. He is the current police, one of the current police officers in Hawken. And he especially looks at you, Burn. You have a tight connection to him. It's almost like you're kind of a father figure to him in an odd way. He's always looked out for you and you've always looked out for him. You were together in the police academy. You taught him the ropes, showed him the ropes. Burn, <laughs> welcome back. You seem like your old, old self. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> I uh, try and straighten up in front of him. I don't want to look bad in front of John. And I hold out uh, my hand to him, shake it. His. Oh, it's good to see you, John. How, how have things been? And here there's not been too much trouble. Ah. Uh. Well, where is that, where is that Richard boy? I want to, I want to talk to all, all four of you, uh, just for a moment. Just, you know, he looks around after Richard. Well, I suppose he would see me trying to do my best to speak with Rebecca and her friends. He, um, you hear a familiar voice. You hear the voice of uh, John Clark cut through the... The noise of the bar. Richard! Boy, come over here. Whatever you're doing with that young girl, you come over here right now. I fall, I cross my arms, and I look over at you sternly. I'm a little confused at first, and I almost look apologetic to Rebecca. I don't really want to speak to... Who's that, Mr. Clark? But, well, I'm being called, so I I kind of just cough and say, Oh, I'm needed, I... Yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you you enjoy the rest of your drink, but Rebecca, we, we, we can. I'd love to talk some more. Don't stay away too long. 
listen, John, John, uh, is this really, is this really the time and the place to be? I don't know what this is. No, I shift my stern gaze to you instead, Owen. No, no, no. Take it easy. It, it. I do this with uh, all of uh, the young men and older men that just turned back from the war. Just the status, you know. You, you. I think it's important that you know what is going on in Halkin right now, so you can become an established member of the society we're trying to build here. I do come over finally, joining everyone, saying, "Mr. Mr. Clark, good to see you." Good to see you, Richard. Up to no good again, I see, with that young Rebecca. <laughs> well, uh, I just sort of leave it at that and say, you, you needed something. Well, first of all, how are you all doing? Welcome back. It's Town hasn't been the same without you. Well, it's been a strange time back, I can tell you that. And uh, I'd just like to, uh, John, we go a long way back. I'd just like to... Uh, Get to the bottom of what it is you need. Well, I think you almost mentioned it, Owen. It's been a strange time. Very strange. Uh, you wouldn't know. He gestures to all of you. Since you haven't been here for a while, but... There's been some, some things going on in, in Harkin that's... It's not about the war. Well, at least I don't think so. He pauses and takes a deep breath before he continues. See, there's, there's been a few incidents that puggles my mind. And before you go off partying and enjoying yourself, by all means do. I think it's important that you know what's happening currently. Well, most importantly, we do have a, a child missing. Uh, whose child? Well, I don't, you probably know young Callum. He's Anna's brother. He's been missing for a week now, and <sighs> I hate to say this, but we've been unable to locate him. Oh, that explains her behavior. She doesn't seem like herself. Well, that and... <laughs> my poor girl. The war took her parents as well. She's all alone. Her and her brother. Well, now she's entirely alone since Callum is gone too. I'm surprised she's working, poor girl. Hmm. Well, you know, the world is tough. You gotta make a living. Admirable. She's not a child anymore. She's 19. We can't do much for her. Dad and... There's been... Strange sightings in Hawken. Animals. Looking... Not like they usually do. Rats. I saw one just now. I saw one just... Just... What, three minutes ago? I told you, Burn. There was one right outside this pub. What, what, what kind of disfiguration exactly? Uh, Carwin pauses. He's, he moves to cross his arms, incredulous, but the suit doesn't quite fit, so he gives up after a few seconds. He's like, come on, you're having me on. Is this a thing? You and Reverend, I'm surprised. Burn, I'm not. What? What's going on? You, you will show respect to the police officer. Uh, it's okay, Burn. It's, well, we're used to young Karen's mischievousness in this town. Uh, I don't think I should mention that incident with your daughter. You would have wiped out the town with Nazi bombs with irresponsible lighting. Now, Burn, take it easy. Take it easy. Well, now, hang on, hang on a moment. What, what do you mean by... Animals, like, like yes, we, we did see something. What, like, wolves? I, what, is it something maybe from the mines? People say that sometimes chemicals can affect animals. I, I read a book or two on that, actually. Uh, what do you mean? Wolves don't live in mines. No, that's true. Well, it's funny you should mention wolves. 
Um, I'm sure all of you know that we do have, you know, a, f- a few uh, wolf activities, but they're mostly far away from town. But we've had them unnervingly close the last couple of weeks. Uh, they are big packs, large packs, and they are very aggressive. Un- unlike, well, I don't know much about animal behavior, but unlike anything I've seen in my time. Disturbing. That's very disturbing. Well, I, I hate to ask you for favors the first day you return from war, and especially at a day like this, but Burn, he looks at you. I know you're retired, and I know the rest of you would probably just want to return back to your normal life and not be in the middle of drama, but would you mind taking a look, look at Anna's house? You know, just a welfare check, just to check up if she's okay. I know that you, Karen, you know her from school. You know Anna. Uh, I don't know how well you know her, but perhaps she trusts you. Reverend, you are, well, someone that most people in this town trust. Well, if not everyone. And Burn, you with your background, I trust your abilities. Perhaps, perhaps a lot of you could, could just check up on her. Uh, you know, I'm very busy these days, I, I, I sorting out with the house and uh, knocking down uh, the walls and uh, trying to sort things out. Oh, come on, come on, Burn, come on, if this is what the town needs, let's just... L- listen, John, as soon as you said that she'd... Sin- that uh, Callum had gone... I I said to myself, well, tomorrow morning I'll have to, I'll check in on Anna and I'll have a nice word with her and we'll I'll talk things through. So it's not a problem at all. I will speak to her tomorrow, bright and early. And I and if you think it's a good idea that these three come along as well, you know, show a bit of town solidarity and all that, then I think that's I think that's a fine idea. I assume you've already spoken to her then as as the police officer. Well, that's my problem. She doesn't speak. I know it sounds crazy, but she's just like the cat stole her tongue or something. She's silent ever since Callum disappeared. Well, that's not that strange. Sir, I mean, it can happen. Sometimes trauma can affect folk in terrible ways. Uh, I mean, if you think I can help, I it's not my specialty, of course, but I can certainly try and help. Um, if you think it would be helpful, what do you think, Father Owen? I could give her a look over. I was a little concerned when I saw her earlier. Well, it wouldn't be the first person we've seen go through a trauma and get rendered mute, I suppose. Although, yeah, neither of us are... We're not psychiatrists, but at least I can lend a bit of comfort and Richard can provide, I guess, a cursory exam uh, just to make sure she's not a danger to herself. But if she's not speaking, it's not like we're investigators. We're not going to be able to find anything out about where Callum's gone to unless there's something left in the house. But uh, either way, John, of course, you know, I've got no problem with it and... Uh, I'd be pleased to help. And you, young man? He looks so right, Colin. I mean, I certainly appear put upon. I understand why you'd want the reverend. I understand why you'd want a doctor. I understand why you'd want the constable after he's had time to sober up. But at this point, it still feels very much like a, a small conspiracy to get me into some kind of something. But... Owen seems to be taking it seriously enough, and Carwin is possessed of enough self-awareness to know that making a scene isn't the kind of thing the village wants from him right now. So it's very much a childlike, fine, sure, tomorrow morning. Uh, Don't take it that way. This is your moment to redeem yourself after dodging the war. You see me, uh, I'm uh, squinting at you and uh, nodding slowly. And... Other 
occurrences in the past that we I don't have to mention right now. It looks so red burn. And I pursing my lips even tighter. Carwin, Carwin, see, Carwin, see it like this. Uh, you, you grew up with a girl. You, it's a friend. You're, you're being a friend to her, and I think, I can imagine how she would probably need a friend right now, with Callum being gone. So you know. Hi. I, I mean, you'd probably get along a little better with her than I would. I'm a little bit older, after all. Ah, uh, you're the one who's closest to her in age, Colin. Of course, and Reverend, you're right, and. With Byrne here, uh, more than willing to supervise my interactions with the young women of the village, I'm sure everything will be just fine. Well, that's settled then. Well, please do it early tomorrow. I do worry about her. Right, well, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and uh, finally deliver a lemon and lime to my wife and maybe actually have a drink. I um, hold out my arm and I, I pull Richard in and I say to you quietly, uh, you should ask the girl for a dance. I blink a little, surprised at Burn's sudden insight, but I just sort of nod and say, oh, yeah, that's actually what I was thinking, Mr. Burn. <laughs> hmm. Enjoy yourself the rest of the evening. You might be making an early one. Don't, don't worry, I'll be up early. And how does Cowan spend the rest of his night? I'm still not 100% willing to take this seriously, but having seen what happened with Anna earlier and now this story, I'm at least inclined to be a little more observant. So I'm going to do one of my favorite things in the world, which is interrupt my brother when he's talking to women. Just be nearby enough to eavesdrop and see if they're also different in, in any way. I want to really observe his his flirting, his boasting, see how the, the, the town girls are reacting to it, and maybe do my own kind of confirmation. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing yet. And what about Burn? How does he spend the rest of his night? Well, uh, I was going to actually see if I could strike up a conversation with Esther, or the couple of Jenkins. I hadn't eaten. I, I couldn't get myself to make myself a proper meal and there was no food in the house. I was going to see if I could somehow lead the conversation into her fine cooking and trying to get myself invited for a meal. What do you say, Owen? Does that happen? Well, it's a bit late now to have a meal uh, over at Towers Burn. Um, you know, I was hoping after we had a couple of drinks, the wife and I would, you know, have a quiet night in. Uh, let let's um, let let's uh, let's let's have dinner. Let's have dinner tomorrow, okay? Um, they're just like old times. Well, like like old times, I say, and I awkwardly. Uh, get up from the table to leave the two of you alone and then I'll, I'll be making my way home for an, for an early evening then. Eventually I will make my way home, aware that I have to be up early in the morning. Still, I'm a little conflicted as I walk home. It's strange. These are the streets of Hulk and the streets I am very familiar with, but something just seems strange. On one hand, I'm really happy that Rebecca believed everything I said. But on the other hand, this animal business is making me a little anxious as I walk home. I take a moment to look into the dark, look at the forests, look at the hills, the mountains. And I'm filled with a sense of dread. I shake it off, though, and make my way home. Still, not quite the homecoming I was expecting. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the campaign The Whispers of the Mountains for Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. The Whispers of the Mountains was written by Clara Herbal, who was also our keeper for this series. 
we were joined by our dear friend Matthew Dawkins and our new friend Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games. The music is from the Cthulhu, Nyarlathotep, Yogsothoth, Shabnigrath and Asathoth compilations by our friends at Cryochamber and the Paleo Wolf album Genesis. Check them all out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more music for your gaming table. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon. Martin Hoshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Ludwig Manford, and Bob DeLang for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening. And remember, that is not dead, which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die.